Welcome engineers, my name is Travis IQ, and today we're going to talk about some quick tips for getting Cisco's CML installed. That's their Cisco's Modeling Labs. Um, this is their Viral 2.0, which is the second iteration of their lab infrastructure, uh, their virtual lab infrastructure, and it's actually pretty cool. It's really useful for a couple of reasons. One would be if you were labbing to study for exams, things like the CCNA, CCNA security, CCNP, something like this. And another is if you were modeling your Cisco environment, right? Um, we could do this in, with our physical devices, right? But sometimes setting up the physical devices is tedious and comes with some other troubleshooting issues that are gonna eat up some of your time when all you were trying to do was understand the configs. Things like termination and wiring issues and having the correct cables and male and female terminations and things like this um, that we can completely eliminate with the lab environment. You would say, well, that's a, a detriment from a setup perspective in understanding the setup. But if we already understand the setup and we're really just looking to get to the configs, then our virtual labs is actually really, is really, really awesome. And setting CML up is actually not trivial. And I've seen a few people post about this and it's really annoying and that it has to be set up on hypervisored virtual environment. So something like VMware ZSXI, you might say, well, Travis, why didn't you choose um, VirtualBox? Or why didn't you choose Proxmox or XCPNG? Because CML doesn't run on those. A few, a few things to start here, right? CML uh, needs to be run in the hypervisor. It cannot be run bare metal. Um, and they'll tell you this, Cisco will tell you this when, when you download it. It currently is only supported on VMware ZSXI. So you're gonna need ESXi. And you're going to need something to put that hypervisor on, some hardware. I will tell you in my infrastructure, I have a, a Dell PowerEdge 720XD, an older 720XD that I bought used from uh, a local uh, dev shop. It's actually really, really useful, cheap, powerful enough to run CML and powerful enough to do a couple other things. I have some Ubuntu boxes and some other Linux boxes and things like this running on there as well. And so what we're going to do is start from the bare metal. And so that means that we have to install ESXi on a server. We can then use ESXi to load the CML OVA, the virtualization file, and then log into CML and drag some things in. Let's get started. So let's assume that we have our server, a Dell PowerEdge 720XD that we're going to install this on. We need a bootable version of the hypervisor so that we can plug our USB in, boot and on boot, hop into the BIOS and tell it to boot from the USB and boot to VMware's ESXi installation that we want, right? So the first thing that we need to do is download uh, ES vSphere and ESXi. So you can do this from VMware's website. Uh, you should note that there are some versions of ESXi that you can download, um, the vSphere version 6.5 or 6.0 whatever, um, 7.0, uh, just so that you know, again, little tips and tricks. The 7.0 is the only version that v VMware will give you an unlimited time free license. This is okay, uh, but if you had like a 6.5, then you can't get an unlimited time free license. Why do I say unlimited time? Because uh, it doesn't expire but it still has uh, limitations in terms of the number of vCPUs and a bunch of other things, right? So it is limited in its implementation, but not limited in terms of time. So that would be the 7.0 version, which is what I have pulled up here. So we can manually download the 7.0 version. Another quick side note, you'll notice I have a lot of side notes here because I ran into these problems when doing it myself, is that the 7.0 download button sometimes doesn't work if you're using an ad blocker, something like the Raspberry Pi based Pi hole which I use in my office. So I had to use Google's DNS and then come back to this, download 7.0. Now that I have a downloaded version, I can make a bootable USB. How do I make a bootable USB? I can use a bootable USB production software like Rufus. I can select my device. I use a 32 gig uh, USB uh, that I use for that I use to put all my bootable images on. Um, I'll just make a new bootable one on that exact USB basically all the time. I probably should keep a couple handy, but I just remake them on those on, on that specific USB. Uh, then I would be selecting a disk or ISO and I can select right my VMware ISO here and then make a bootable USB and then I have a bootable USB stick, right? The next step would be to boot from that USB on your server. Now this is gonna be different for a 
Dell server, a PowerEdge, a HP ProLiant server, right? A Microtik server, something like this. So um, just be aware that usually, right? The best way to do this is turn the device off, turn it back on, and then on boot, pop out in the BIOS by pressing F11, F2, F7, whatever it is on your device. Um, and then from the BIOS menu, you can say boot from USB. It'll say like BIOS boot or something like this. In the Dell, in the Dell servers, it says BIOS boot. So we can boot from the USB and it will then boot directly from that USB, that bootable USB that you made, into VMware's ESXi. And then you can go through the installation uh, procedures. You can look at some other YouTube videos for the installation procedures for ESXi, but choosing English keyboard and things like this. Um, and then you will have a virtualization platform, VMware's vSphere and ESXi, running on a Dell PowerEdge server, let's say, for example. Okay, now I have ESXi running. I'm in VMware's ESXi Type 1 bare metal hypervisor utility here. Uh, you'll notice that I actually have two virtual machines installed on this device. I have an Ubuntu machine and Cisco CML, but we'll talk about the process of downloading CML and then getting it running on ESXi here in a second. So now that I have this running, I need an OVA, right? An open virtualization format file to load into ESXi for CML. So this is Cisco's modeling labs infrastructure that they package together in a virtualization format called a .ova, and I can load it into ESXi. How do I do this? Right, well, I need to go out to Cisco's website and purchase a Cisco modeling labs key and download their, their CML OVA. So I can go out and purchase a key uh, for one year's access, which I have done, right? I can download uh, C the CML OVA. And then once I have the OVA, right, I can come back to VMware. Once I'm back in VMware, I can deploy a virtual machine with an OVF or an OVA, right? These stand open virtualization formats, right? And I can take the downloaded OVA, and usually these OVAs will have a little OVA box like this, right? It's a virtualization container, open virtualization format. It's not a container, but give it a nickname, new CML. Select storage, licensing and agreements, and a couple of deployment options. And then finish and deploy. I'm not going to finish and deploy because I already have CML deployed here. If I look at my CML instance right now, or I can actually go into the console and uh, look at the, the back end, the CentOS Linux back end for uh, their, OVA, their CML OVA. But what I really want to do is access the, the, the UI, right, the GUI. And it actually tells me how to do this right here, right, going to a specific IP address, in my case, 192.168.1.109, and log in. If I go, about, go out to my lab manager, I can look at some layouts that I've been looking at recently. Oh, CCMP Encore layouts. Yeah. So there will be subsequent videos where I design some lab infrastructures, troubleshoot some lab infrastructures, and show you how I approach lab infrastructures for both learning and teaching. Um, but I think that this is sufficient for now. As is always the case, engineer, break stuff, and have fun. We'll see you next time.